Hello everybody and welcome to To The Moon, a new let's play on my channel. And yes, this let's play is starting a little bit later than intended. I couldn't make the original schedule on Friday due to some technical problems with this game. Because first of all, my recording software wouldn't really recognize the game as a game. So I had to switch to the alternate option of just recording whatever's on the screen at the moment. But then it would record the game in a wrong aspect ratio, because apparently uh, the original aspect ratio of this game is a very old school 4 to 3. But when it launches, it just goes into full screen and it stretches to, you know, uh, the 16 to 9 aspect of my monitor. So um, I'm actually seeing the game a little bit stretched. But I wanted to make sure that it's recording in the actual um, uh, aspect ratio, so I had to tweak around a little and do a, a bunch of test recordings. But I think I have it figured out now, so the video that you are seeing should be in 4 to 3. And that's how it's intended to be, I suppose. Also, I might reduce the quality of my videos a little bit, because apparently the um, resolution of this game is like 480p so I'm not sure if there's really uh, any point in uploading videos in 1080p and 60 frames per second because that's obviously not going to make the game look any different but uh, if I scale back the quality a bit it would save me some time in rendering and uploading the videos so we'll see about that um, but yeah enough about that I hope everything is going to work now and this is a little bit of a different uh, game for my channel, I suppose. It's a lot smaller, uh, a lot more indies than what I usually play. But it has been requested frequently and I needed a short game uh, for my break in between Assassin's Creed Syndicate and Origins. And this one is pretty short, it's just like four to five hours. But apparently it's quite well received, so I'm curious about it. And it seems to go for a very retro look. Um, it looks like some old-timey 90s RPG. And I guess for added authenticity, they went for the 4 to 3 aspect ratio. Um, as usual, please no spoilers in the comment sections because this is a blind let's play. Although I have seen the first two minutes of the game now because uh, due to all these uh, technical problems, I had to make sure it was properly recording, not just the title screen, but also the gameplay. So I had to start up the game and, you know, do a few test recordings. But it's just like the first two minutes of the game that I've uh, started already. Also, um, as you would expect from a small retro in this game, the dialogue in this game apparently is not voiced, which means that I guess I'm going to read the dialogue. Um, I guess if you would prefer I could also just stay silent and you read it for yourself but I feel that this would be a little bit awkward so I think I'm just going to read all the on-screen dialogue and yeah um, not much else to say about it I don't really know much about this game I guess it's about going to the moon maybe but yeah let's just begin and uh, find out
All right, so here we go. And as you can see, we have dialogue here, but it's just you know, written on screen. So I guess I'm just going to read all the characters. I guess I should make like different voices for the different characters, but I'm not very good at that. So maybe I'm not going to bother with that kind of stuff. Dr. Rosaline, where were you looking, Neil? Well, excuse me for heroically evading that squirrel coming out of nowhere. <laughs> I guess this is a squirrel, but if that's a squirrel, it seems to be dead because it's not moving. You ran over it anyways, yeah, apparently so. Oh. <laughs> you ran over it and hit a tree. Look, don't worry, it's a company car. Oh, that makes it all better. Are you kidding me? The boss is going to kill us. Hmm, well, just say that I was saving a puppy. He likes puppies, right? He's more of a cat person. <laughs> Why does the world have to be so complicated? Yeah, that's a good question. Fine, whatever furball he fancies, crisis averted. Well, but the squirrel is still dead. Good, go write that on your report later. Let's grab the equipment from the car and move already. So I guess equipment and car, some more special. Left click an object to interact with it. Okay, this is basically where I ended my test recording. So this is as far as I have uh, proceeded in the game so far. So I can move around my cursor. I can apparently look at various stuff like the dead squirrel, I suppose. Oh, but... Um, he actually picked up the equipment. Well, that's good. Got the sucker. Let's roll. Okay, so can you actually look at the squirrel? Okay, no. They're looking at it. <laughs> and yeah, it's dead. Oh, come on. I crashed the car while trying to evade it. What more do you want? Not crash the car and evade it. Yeah, that would have been uh, the perfect outcome. That's asking too much, apparently. <laughs> Okay, so uh, the squirrel is dead. Also, I wonder if I can, like, actually move? Oh, I can, but it's the arrow keys. Well, that is very old school. Well, I guess I'm going to use the arrow keys. Um, But it's a little bit inconvenient, because if I have one hand on the mouse to you know, click on stuff, then... Um, the arrow keys are a little bit out of my way. I guess I'm just going to move the keyboard a little bit so I can use the arrow keys with my left hand. <laughs> but yeah, this is very old school uh, from a time when you didn't really use your mouse to steer. Or can I just like maybe approach stuff and then look at it so I can just get rid of the mouse altogether? No, I still have to, to use, uh... Oh, I can, I can, like, click on stuff and they will move that. I guess that's, that's going to be a little bit more convenient, so I don't have to use the, the arrow keys. Okay, let's start to uh, look around a little bit more. We have a sign over here. Wilds household ahead. Okay. Putting up a sign when they live in the middle of out of middle of nowhere is like asking to be robbed. Well, but if they don't put up a sign, then no one will ever find them, like actual visitors. Um. Okay. Uh, this is all I can look at. Seems like it. So does it matter which uh, path I take? Let's just use this one. The sign to the house points to the other way. Really? There's there's no sign on it. Oh, how kind of it to exist. <laughs> Is there actually like an error on it? No, there's not. There's absolutely no indication which path is the correct one. But okay, apparently it's this one. Let's go. Hey, wait, don't forget the car. What about it? just wanted to see if you'd remember. Oh, okay. Closing the doors might be a good idea. How thoughtful of you. 
Okay, um, now we need to keep moving to find the house. Okay, let's make sure that we don't miss anything to look at. Um, well, this is where I came from, right? So... Where do we need to go next? It doesn't look like we can go through here. Oh, I see. This is stairs. Um, alright. Again, don't see anything to look at. Oh, um... Something is blocking our path. Who put a boulder here? It's <laughs> a good question. Maybe it's their security system. Yes, that is probably it. <laughs> Cucumbers? <laughs> we don't have time for this fluff. Let's try pushing it out of the way. Okay, maybe we could find a tree branch to jack it with. Wait. Or we could just call it a night and blame it on that. It looks like Dr. Watts is not all that um, motivated to do whatever they're trying to do here. Push it by hand, find a branch, abort mission and go home. I do wonder what happens if I pick this option. Is this just going to be the end of the game and that's it? But I guess finding a branch sounds like, you know, a smart approach. A branch will do. Okay, so let's see. Um, I think we actually have one right over here. Received tree branch. Okay, so it kind of looks like an old-timey RPG, but it seems to be more like you know, point-and-click adventure. You pick up stuff and then you can use it to solve problems. All right, this better work. Let's see. <laughs> What was that? Yeah, it looks like the boulder just collapsed. I don't even... <laughs> it's some kind of an air ball. What? Oh, right, we need to get going for now. <laughs> right. Okay, so... Um, but apparently we can go through here now. Yeah, uh, apparently the boulder was not actually a boulder, which means we probably could have pushed it by hand if it was just filled with air. Weird. Oh, look at that. Squirrel! But, uh, squirrel is gone. Squirrel is gone. Okay. At least we didn't kill that one. Alright, so, um, this is a very huge... Uh, garden, I suppose? I mean, apparently someone is living here. Again, let's see if we can find anything to look at. But I'm not seeing anything right now. It's a pretty uh, nice garden, though. I mean, look at this. We have a little pond over here and flowers so we have a door over here which we could probably use to enter but um, let's see what's going on over here first okay um, oh this is the, uh, the lighthouse we've seen in like the title screen but it doesn't look like we can actually go there, so... The door it is! The door it is! And I've actually reverted to steering with the arrow keys after all. Just takes some getting used to. Okay, let's open the door. Ma, they're here. Okay, these are the kids we've seen earlier. Not a bad place to retire at, huh? 
not a bad place to live, I would say. I could do better. <laughs> really. Night shifts, love them or hate them? Well, I do night shifts too, but I don't have the money to retire at a place like this. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. You know the answer, you stupid owl. It's probably gonna be another all-nighter, you know? I know. So what exactly are they doing? I mean, they're doctors, so... I guess that could be why they are here. And I doubt they'd have any coffee. Shut up. <laughs> and the ocean waves will sing lullabies. <laughs> Not through your blathering, they won't. Well, I couldn't read that because it was far too uh, quick. Don't forget the equipment, Moran. Yeah, apparently, Dr. What's over here has to carry all the stuff. I don't get paid enough for this. Well, apparently you get paid enough to uh, get a nice retirement home. Act 1. I never told anyone, but I've always thought they were lighthouses. Hmm. Lily, Dr. Watts and Dr. Rosaline, I presume. Thanks for coming in on such a short notice. That's okay, I tend to be bad at predicting death as well. What? Are you the patient's daughter? Oh no, I'm just his caretaker. And these are my children, Sarah and Tommy. Alright, so someone is dying. It's not exactly a 9 to 5 job, so Johnny lets us live here. I suppose this Johnny is our man? Johnny. Listen, if it's a kid we're dealing with, I don't think we're the ones you want. No, no, he just prefers to be called that. Alright. He's upstairs right now with his medical doctor. So, they are not medical doctors. Come with me. Hmm, okay. Come on, grab that case and let's go. When my back breaks one day, I'll sue you with the insurance claim. Well, you do that, Dr. Watts. Received equipment. Alright, let's head upstairs before I drop this. And, okay, now I'm in control again. I guess I can look around a little bit before I go upstairs. I mean, quite obviously we have different rooms here. The patient is waiting upstairs, better not waste time. Okay, so I can't just go off on my own and explore. I actually gotta follow the story for now. All right, let's do it. Go upstairs. Yes, let's do it. Okay, they're gone. Are these the kids? Whoever gets there first gets to play the melody. Yeah, it's the kids. No fair, you pushed me. Did not. <laughs> Whatever, you get the boring two notes anyway. Oh, now they're playing the melody. Okay. You do that, kids, because apparently uh, the opening credits need to continue. Dr. Rosaline, those kids are pretty good for their age. Well, I guess I kind of, you know, work together for the melody, so each of them has an easier task. Hey, you're the one who said there was no time to waste. And incidentally, 
I am the one who is carrying the weight of a small meteoroid. What are you carrying anyway? Yeah, yeah, come on. Okay, let's continue. Oh, is this our patient over here? Got some people we can talk to. Uh, let's talk to her first. I think that's the one we've spoken to earlier. Lily, ready to set up. Set machine down, look around first. No, um, let's look around. Gee, you know, I think I'd like to carry this excruci excruciatingly heavy object around some more. Thanks for asking, though. <laughs> I'm sure you can handle it. So, what do we got over here? A selection of readings from medical journals. Alright. And I guess this over here is the medical doctor. Doctor, he's unresponsive at this point, but by the looks of things, he's, he's still consciously hanging on. Okay. It's hard to say how long you'll have, but I would hurry. Okay, I'm still not sure what exactly we're trying to do here, but I guess uh, it has something to do with that heavy equipment. So, let's set the machine down. Yes, it'll just be a moment. Are you sure a common household power outlet is sufficient? I guess we will find out. No worries, we are the experts. Oh crap, well, maybe you were wrong. Standard procedures, just keeping you on your toes. Yeah, you should be careful because apparently the old guy here is on some kind of a machine to keep him alive, so if <laughs> the energy in this place fails, then he might die right away. Well, this looks futuristic. How is he doing? Not so well. If I were to say he's just got a day or two left. That's plenty of time. So you two can grant him any wish, huh? Oh, well, that's interesting. To try, at least. But we always succeed, because we're awesome. <laughs> this Dr. Watts is uh, very convinced of himself, huh? So, what's the wish? The moon. <laughs> the moon? The moon. He wants to go to the moon. Okay, so that's where the title of the game comes from. <laughs> the geezers just keep on getting crazier, huh? <laughs> so, can you do it? It depends. She meant to say yes. Yeah, Dr. Watts is very convinced of himself. Why don't you tell us about our client here? That I don't really know much. Johnny's an odd man. Through the two years that he, I've worked here, he rarely spoke. He worked as a craftsman for most of his life and his wife passed away two years ago. I don't really know many details. I would have known more if I were his paper boy for Pete's sake. <laughs> He's also kind of rude. Shush, just do your thing. Well, I suppose if you look around the house, you may find some more info. I suppose Johnny wouldn't mind since he signed for you too. Hmm, so be it. Alright, which, which one of us plays detective? Who goes to search the house? Play control Dr. Watts and Dr. Rosaline. 
it seems to me that Dr. Rosaline is actually more interested in actually doing this case. Uh, Dr. Watts doesn't really seem all that enthusiastic about this whole uh, thing. So I guess I'm going to pick Dr. Rosaline since she seems to be a little bit more into it. Thanks for the offer, but I'm busy leaving a butt print on this chair. Yeah, that sounds like something that you would like to do. <laughs> right, do continue. Tommy and Sarah can show you around. They're probably at the piano downstairs. All right, so now I'm in control of Dr. Rosaline. Um, so I guess now I can actually start to explore this place a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, can I talk to Watts? Shoo, go do your detective work. <laughs> yep, yeah, he's a bit of an ass. But um, I can walk around and investigate. We have some kind of door over here. Maybe I should start with this one. Um, oh, I have to go around here, right? Yes. Oh, this is just um, the bathroom. Oh, I think I found something shiny. No, it's not something shiny. It's just the light switch. Um, Anyway, is there anything of interest around here except light switches? Not as far as I can tell. I mean, I hope that everything that I can interact with or look at does show up if I hover uh, with a cursor over it. And this doesn't look like there's anything in the restroom so i guess i will go downstairs again um, i don't know any point in talking to the doctor again um no this is just uh, the same dialogue again okay so i basically have to go and talk to the kids i think that's what they want to tell me here Oh, but we can look at the pictures on the wall. A painting of a lighthouse by the cliffside. Probably the one that we've seen earlier. Huh? A painting of a woman holding something yellow and blue. Something yellow and blue. That is oddly vague. A painting of an animal of some sort. It's all kind of vague. A casual painting of three people. All right. Yeah, none of that is all that informative. So I guess I will just go downstairs again. Oh, doctor, wait, come back here for a moment. All right. I have something for you. So what is it? Here, take this. Received remote patient monitor. That'll keep you updated on Johnny's status. Thanks, I was just going to ask for it. Oh, so does this mean that if his condition gets worse, I get some kind of notification? Which could mean that I don't have like indefinite time to explore this place, but at some point I have to return because he's going to die? <laughs> okay. Johnny's heart monitor is now activated in menu. Oh, do I have a menu? Ah, well, look at that. I do have a menu. Yeah, um, you, as you may have seen, the start menu of this game was extremely simple. There were no options, uh, no way to adjust like the volume or key bindings or whatever. But now I actually have some kind of menu. Characters, Dr. Eva Rosaline. Senior Memory Traversal Agent. Senior Memory Traversal Agent. Sigmund Corp. I have notes, but not really. <laughs> not sure about this. And I have one item, the remote patient monitor description, connects wirelessly to the patient's local monitor for live supervision. All right. 
Um, yeah, let's just continue. Apparently that's all there is to the menu. But can I actually like use it in some fashion? I mean, I guess this over here is supposed to be the monitor, so he still has a heartbeat. <laughs> so <laughs> that's all I can read from this monitor. But okay, um, let's go and let's check out the house. All right, uh, got the kids down here. Um, but maybe I will explore a little bit on my own first. Okay, this is just the time. Okay, um, show around house, keep playing. Yeah, I think for the time being, <laughs> uh, I'll just let them play their music while I just explore this place a little bit on my own. Okay, apparently we have another restroom over here. Um... Turn on and store tap water. Is there any actual reason for me to do this at the moment? I mean, if I can do it, sure, why not? Let's do it. <laughs> but that seems to be all. Apparently we have a cellar down here and I think this is where I came from, so this is just back outside. I'd better ask those kids first. Okay, so apparently I am supposed to uh, ask the children. All right. What about the door over here? Okay, apparently this is the kitchen. Okay, let's have a quick look around. <laughs> Just going to turn on all the lights. But can't really find anything of interest here either, so instead let's uh, ask for a tour. Um, yeah, can you show me around the house, please? Sarah and Tommy, right? Your mother said to ask you to, to show me around the house. Okay, maybe we will. <laughs> maybe? Maybe? I think we just need a little convincing, that's all. <laughs> okay, uh, how would that work? What do you think, Tommy? Yeah. Uh, what would you like? We want one trillion dollars. <laughs> that's a lot of money for just, you know, showing me around the house. How about some candy instead? Oh, the candy cane mom hides from us. Yeah, maybe that. <laughs> huh? There's a giant candy cane on top of a high shelf that we can't reach. Oh, I think I've actually seen it. It's in the kitchen. Ma put it there to save for when we do chores. Get it for us and we'll give you a tour through the house. These kids have quite the business instinct. What do you say? Well, sure, I'll get it for you. No, cut the crap and help. I guess I will get them the candy cane. My mother used to keep candies on high shelves too. All right, I'll go get it. The kitchen's door is right next to the stairs. Now go. <laughs> These children are a little bit rude too, to be honest. But okay, um, I think I've seen the candy cane already. Yep, there's that candy cane. Oh, you can't reach it either. Well, maybe you can use one of the chairs over here. How about that? <laughs> uh, let's see. Can, can you pick up any of the chairs? How about this one over here? Aha, there we go. 
I feel the children could have done the same to reach the candy cane, but apparently not. Received candy cane. There we go. Terrible calories. Yeah, it's not healthy, but what do you want to do if you uh, convince children? All right, here's your candy cane. Okay, I got what you wanted. Good old candy cane. If you come and give me two at this instant, I won't sneeze on it. <laughs> okay, that worked. Okay, where do we start? I know, there's this funny room in the basement. A funny room in the basement. And that's the first thing you want to show me. Okay. I don't like that funny room. What do you mean by funny room? You'll see. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> do I even want to know? <laughs> we need to get the keys though. Of course we do. The old man hid it inside a book in the study. Okay. So now I have to find that key to go to the funny room in the basement. Um, okay, this could be the study. This is the book room. The key to the funny room is in the thickest book on the upper shelf. I get the feeling that the only reason why the little kid wants me to go to the funny room is because she's curious about it herself and she couldn't she couldn't get to the key. So that's uh why she wants to give me a tour to the basement. All right, let's uh, switch on the light. And I can talk to them apparently. Just a bunch of books in here. There's nothing I don't know about though. <laughs> I'm sure. Tommy used to throw books at me and call it a book fight. Well, Tommy, if you're just throwing books, I'm pretty sure you don't know what's actually inside them. Until one day I threw one back and he needed a band-aid. <laughs> These are really charming children. But okay, um, we gotta find that book and the key inside it. Let's have a quick look around here. There's a few things I can investigate. The Emperor's New Clothes by Hans Christian Andersen. Um, sure, let's read it. Um, oh dear, uh, part of the uh, text is blocked by the icon of my recording software because since the game is in such a low resolution, the icon of my recording software is huge. Um, but I think it's end. And the colors. The colors of that beautiful fabric. I have never seen anything like it in my life. They all try to conceal their disappointment in not being able to see the clothes. A child, however, who had no important role and could only see things as his eyes showed them to him, went up to the carriage. That reminds me that when I was a little kid, like, I don't know, six or seven, my aunt, who was in, like, school, she was like 17 or 18 at that point they actually had like a school play of uh, this book and I got to play the kid who has to say the famous line about you know but uh, he's not wearing any clothes although in this case the Emperor was an Empress because my aunt was playing the Empress so um, she was uh, the one that she wasn't naked. She was basically in her underwear and I was sitting in the audience and I had to scream that line at a certain point and it was very exciting for me because I, I get to play in uh, that important school play. But okay, um, it's going to continue. But he hasn't got anything on. Yeah, you know, this line. The child said, don't talk nonsense, his father reprimanded. But the boy's remark, which has been heard by the bystanders, was repeated over and over. There we go. Um, do we have any other stuff we can look at? Well, I guess this over here is the book that I'm looking for. Dusklight, the tale of a girl who fell in love with a zombie 
who omitted the smell of daisies when showered with gentle sunlight. That is weird, but I guess I'm going to read it. Uh, maybe another year. <laughs> I guess she's not interested in that. But we have um, the key, so there we go. He chose its hiding spot well by picking the weirdest book he had in his library. Okay. And yeah, looks like that's all I can do here. I wonder if Johnny has actually read all these books. I have no idea. Me and Sarah used to have book fights until one of us needed a band-aid. <laughs> I heard that uh, one was actually you. Ma told us to stop, but we do it anyways. Obviously. Anyway, uh, we can't open the funny room in the basement now, because um, I found the key. So, I guess we're just moving on to the basement. This is the basement. We play hide and seek here. Turn on the light before you trip over something. That's good advice. There we go. Light turned on. A dusty pile of Animorph books sit here. <laughs> Funny, he doesn't want to read them anymore, which is why they're in the library now. Um, is this a funny room over here? Because if it is, I would like to investigate everything else first. The chest is locked. Ooh, a little mystery over here. No, I don't. I don't want to go upstairs. Go down again. Um, yeah, let's check out this place first. The chest's locked. Another locked chest. The cabinet is filled with unused fine china. And this one is filled with dusty books. Alright. Boxes filled with colored papers. So basically there's just a bunch of really random stuff that I don't exactly need. Once we were down here and the lights were out and Tommy fell down those stairs. <laughs> he chipped a tooth, but that's okay because he's ugly to begin with. <laughs> What's up with these children? We used to find all kinds of cool junk here. Moldy books, moldy buckets, moldy cheese, you name it. So basically all kinds of moldy stuff. All right, well, um... I guess I'm just going to have a look at the funny room now, huh? The door's locked, but I have the key. So, let's have a look. <laughs> it's like a cave in here. But I do see a light switch, so... Oh, what the hell? <laughs> this is a funny room. It's full of rabbits. What is going on? A stuffed toy platypus. Huh. It looks adorable enough to annoy Neil. Might come in handy. <laughs> um, poke it, take it. Well, maybe I should poke it first to make sure it's not like haunted or something. <laughs> well, now it f fell down. Sit it up. Interesting. I guess I'll take it. Anyway, what else do we got here? A broken music box. Alright, but what's up with all of these rabbits or whatever it is? Can I actually go through here? Because it doesn't seem like I can. <laughs> Did you see it? What? do you two know about all of these rabbits? Nothing! <laughs> the old man didn't want anyone to go inside, so we never told him. <laughs> There's more of them, actually. <laughs> that is so weird. Where? Inside the abandoned lighthouse. It's just beneath this cliff. Wanna go see? I got the keys. 
You aren't supposed to go in there either, are you? <laughs> I don't think these kids care. Remind me to never take you to Neil's house. So, you wanna go see the lighthouse? Well, it's rather cold outside, but... Decision. Go see the lighthouse, stay and wait for machine. Nah, I think I should see the lighthouse and get to the bottom of this. Why rabbits? Um, may have something to do with the moon? Because there's kind of a rabbit on the moon? At least that's what uh, they believe in Japan. You know, the man in the moon is actually a rabbit on the moon. You know, the, the patterns on the moon look a little bit like a rabbit. You know what? Fine. Maybe it'll tell me more about those rabbits. Let's go check out that old lighthouse. Okay, so I guess I have to go outside now and have a look at the lighthouse and maybe this will shed some light on this uh, weird funny room. However, um, this will have to wait until the next episode. Um, I guess I can make a save here. Yeah, it looks like I can just save whenever I want. Um, oh, and I have the other characters in my party now. Tommy doesn't like turtles. Sarah, aspiring professional ice cream taster, aiming for the top. Those kids are weird. But okay, let's end the first episode here. <laughs> and I guess in the next one we will follow the white rabbits into the lighthouse and see what's going to happen. So as usual, thank you for watching and see you again next time.